You're continuing to listen to the Exam Room Podcast brought to you by the Physicians Committee. Uh, Give the committee a follow on Twitter at PCRM and selfishly me as well at Chuck Carroll WLC. That's two R's and two L's and then WLC. Back again with Dr. Jim Loomis, Medical Director at the Barnard Medical Center, talking all about gut bacteria. And we touched on this at the very end of our first segment together, and that is the link between gut bacteria and chronic disease. But let's start with the difference then um, between good gut bacteria and bad bacteria and the role that that plays. So, you know, I I think when I first started to learn about plant-based nutrition, um, I went to a plant-based healthcare conference and there was talks on cancer and diet and diabetes and multiple sclerosis and autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm. And at one point in every single talk, there was one slide about inflammation. And that's really the, the thing that ties, from a, from a pathophysiologic standpoint, inflammation is really the tie that binds kind of the root cause of many of, of, of these chronic diseases. So, so think of your body as a house, right? And you've got different rooms in the house. You have a brain room and you have a thyroid room and you have a gut room and you have a, you have a, a heart room and you have a, 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 a respiratory room. When we eat a standard American diet, we fill that room up with very angry people because right. the diet itself is so inflammatory. And that has to do with the omega-6, omega-3 ratio. And we can talk about that on another show. <laughs> um, so we create this inflammatory state. So just imagine that a stranger wanders into this house and depending on the nature of the stranger and what room they wander into depends on the clinical on the outcome right Right. so they come in the thyroid room you might get thyroiditis which is an autoimmune disease they might come in the brain room and you get multiple sclerosis they might come in the respiratory room and you get asthma or allergies they might come in the joint room and you get rheumatoid arthritis so where are these strangers coming from well most most of them are coming through the gut because it turns out that, that as I said in the, in the last segment, you know, the gut bacteria play a very important role in helping maintain the gut's function of letting the good stuff in and keeping the bad stuff out. And, and, when, and it also turns out that the kind of gut bacteria that live in your gut, if they're healthy, they maintain a healthy gut lining. They help maintain that barrier so that the bad stuff doesn't get in. But when we populate our gut with bacteria that aren't supposed to be there, or we we decrease the diversity of the bacteria, so we develop this dysbiosis, it's called, uh, unhealthy gut bacteria, we start to leak these strangers into our bloodstream that, that, that aren't supposed to be there because we swallow a lot of really bad stuff. We right. swallow viruses and, and bacteria and protein antigens like milk proteins and cheese proteins and, and gluten and things like that, which aren't designed, many of those aren't really designed to be absorbed in large quantities into, into our bloodstream. And so that's where the strangers come from. Now, for many of these autoimmune diseases, we don't, we're not quite sure what the stranger is. There's some, there's some theory that multiple sclerosis might be a reaction to a viral antigen, that rheumatoid arthritis might be a reaction to certain uh, bacterial antigens. So antigens are the proteins that, that form the lining or the coat of the bacteria virus, uh, which we, form the, we, we, we develop inflammation against. Right. Um, so, so when we, and that's the beauty of a plant-based diet, a whole food plant-based diet, because two things happen. The first thing that happens is, and this happens pretty quickly, is when we, re- when we reduce that omega-6, omega-3 ratio back down to where it should be, one to one, standard American diet might be 10, 15 to one, go to McDonald's a few times a week and give you 50 to one. We've wow. ki- now all of a sudden we've kicked all those angry people out of the house right. and replaced them with people drinking green tea and listening to Mozart, right? <laughs> um, and then, depending on how disrupted your gut flora was to start with, it takes about four to six to 12 weeks where, where you, and when you, as you start to develop and replace the, gut, the unhealthy gut bacteria with, with a more healthy profile of gut bacteria, um, your gut will heal. And, and so now you've shut the front door. And, and it's really fascinating. Um, there, there, and, and so, and there's, a, there's, especially when you look across the, 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 the spectrum of autoimmune diseases, for example, uh, I, I think that is just incredible um, that, that 
you know, we I was ne- I never ever thought of rheumatoid arthritis as a foodborne illness. Right. But in fact, it, there's inc- in more and more evidence, and in fact, at least it plays a very important role. It might it's certainly not the whole the whole issue the whole answer, but it's certainly a part of it. What about something that we can all identify with, and that'd be the cold and the flu, and and that sort of uh, effect that uh, gut bacteria has on the immune system. Probably not as much because those are resp- those those strangers are coming through our respiratory tract, mm-hmm. um, so they're not passing through the gut. So gotcha. probably not as as much um, um, as opposed to um, um, these more autoimmune. In, in chronic inflammatory diseases as opposed to acute infectious diseases. Would you consider heart disease in that category? Well, c- heart disease is interesting. So we know for a fact that that people that o- that omega six omega three ratio plays a very very important role in the development of heart disease. But where the gut bacteria comes in, and again, this is one of the more fascinating, more recent discoveries we found. So there's a compound called TAMO, trimethylamylene oxide which is a byproduct of gut metabolism. And it, it's, it comes from when, the, when our gut bacteria, certain gut bacteria metabolize choline and carnitine, which are found in eggs and meat. Right. And t- when we make this TMO, it's absorbed into our bloodstream, and it, and it alters the way cholesterol is metabolism. And it's been identified as an independent risk factor for heart disease. We've always known there's a subset of patients who have who have heart disease who don't have many of the traditional risk factors. You put someone on a plant-based diet, and guess what happens to their TMO levels? It goes down. And what's even more fascinating, so you take it, you take someone who's an omnivore and you feed them meat, a couple hours later their TMO levels will spike. You put those people on a vegan diet for six or eight weeks, and you feed them a piece of meat. Guess what happens to their TMO? Nothing, because you've replaced the gut bacteria that, really? that or that was were, was responsible for creating the TMAO. Well, that's not to say that if they introduce meat routinely back into their exactly. diet, it won't change back. That, that's exactly right. That's exactly right, and that's why you know if you know that's that's you know if you want heart disease in moderation, then eat meat in moderation. And that's <laughs> why you really you know if you're gonna that's why you really have to be very careful because there probably is a threshold. You know where 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 if you eat enough meat or enough sugar, you, you're and, th- and that's why again moderation really doesn't work if you're if especially if the gut bacteria if there's a concern the gut bacteria is playing a role in some chronic inflammatory disease. I counsel my patients to so you got to really be all in because you know if you're not, then you run the risk of redeveloping this unhealthy gut profile. Cancer is another big one that I want to ask you about. Uh, it seems like. There are so many links between cancer and, and everything else in the body specific to gut bacteria. What is what is the link there? So the main one is through colon cancer itself. Um, we know that that chronic inflammation plays a role and is one of the main risk factors for for um, uh, colon cancer. We also know that that there's things we eat which are unhealthy, environmental mm-hmm. toxins and things which which play a role as well. And we also eat a low fiber diet. So those environmental toxins are in contact with the gut, with the colon wall for a much longer period of time because we don't have any fiber and, you know, you get constipated and, and on and on. Um, but gut b- the bacteria also play a very important role. So there are two autoimmune diseases uh, that create chronic inflammation in the gut, ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. In particular, with ulcerative colitis, that is a known risk factor that accelerates the risk for colon cancer because of this chronic, fairly intense inflammation. Again, there is an association between unhealthy gut bacteria and both inflammatory bowel disease and increasingly in, in, in colon cancer. But again, this is, you know, it's kind of like, it's, it's, you have to be a little bit careful about how, about the inference though, because, you know, there are many moving parts here. Sure. It's, it's not just, you know, when we, improve our diets, that improves the, the, the gut bacteria. So right. is it the diet itself or is it, you know, if you go on a plant-based diet, you, you may go from 15 grams of fiber a day, which is what the average American gets, gets to 50, 75, even 100 grams of fiber a day. Well, guess what? That fiber is a probiotic, a prebiotic, we call it. You hear about probiotics, but these are prebiotics. They feed healthy gut bacteria. So, so you have to be very careful, I think, about assigning cause and effect between is it 
the gut bacteria that, that, that are playing the role, or is it the inflammation, or is it the low fiber, and, and on and on. And it's the same kind of thing with rheumatoid arthritis, because, because of the anti-inflammatory nature of the diet itself, and you might not be exposing yourself to as many environmental toxins and protein antigens and things like that. that you know, and we know that a, a plant-based diet not only improves the gut bacteria, it also is anti-inflammatory, you know, trying to tease out which part of that is, is really affecting, you know, lowering the rate or, or improving the outcomes in rheumatoid arthritis, you know, it's hard to tell. So, I, you know, I, I think you do have to be careful about saying, oh, you know, it, it, that it's the, it's the gut bacteria that are caused, but certainly there's an association. Uh, and, and just real quick before we wrap it up, what is the RDA, the recommended daily uh, allowance for for fiber? What's the well, I, I, you know, the American Heart Association recommends about thirty to forty grams. Average, average American gets about fifteen. Mm, come on, uh, the default. The the other thing that's interesting about fiber, by the way, is that um, f- if you look at societies who eat a lot of fiber in their diet, colon cancer is almost non-existent. Interesting. Okay, you give someone a fiber supplement. It does not change their risk of colon cancer because it's not the fiber per se; it's the food, and uh, and it, it it and it gets back to some of the things we've talked about is this whole idea about nutritional reductionism, because the food when you eat healthy food, not only does it affect does it increase your fiber intake, that food based fiber serves as a prebiotic, so it helps foster healthy gut bacteria. It binds cholesterol and fat. I mean, on and on. So, so it's you know, there's a there's so it's a symphony really, um, and and so you can't tease out this one thing that's important. It's when we eat healthy food, that's where we get the benefit across the board. Makes sense to me. We're going to leave it right there. Dr. Jim Loomis, thank you so much for your time, as always. My pleasure. All right, much more information on everything that we just talked about on PCRM.org.